I am Charles Amanze. I am from Umunju village in Irete, a water west local government area. I am an engineer by profession, married to a lovely, beautiful wife, and blessed with children. We had an event yesterday in the village where we donated computers to the community. The donation was sponsored by World Education Relief, is my non-profit organization based in the United States. What we do in World Education Relief is we get um, donations of IT equipment, computers, printers, and other things from the community. We recycle them and then pass it to um, students who are in need. Since I'm from Nigeria, Imo State, I was compelled to make sure my community shares in this donation. It, um, the donation we had recently was not the first. A few months ago, we gave about 5,000 books to the community as well. So this present donation was uh, 40 computers, state-of-the-art computers. And we gave 20 to the Holy Family Catholic Church Primary School in Europe. They received 20 computers and 20 scanners. Also, the St. Peter's Anglican Church Primary School also received um, 20 computers and 20 scanners. The event was successful and engaging. They were all appreciative of what we gave them. We are also happy that we can help and serve the community. A computers is a it is a bridge for students to get to knowledge and to know what is happening in the world. So I'm sure the, that these computers will make the students grow not only in age but in knowledge, and they will all diversify in their areas of endeavor. So, what is the vision behind this NGO? Um, the question is. How did you start? Okay. For World Education Relief, it started in about 1994 when I was uh, a young engineer when I graduated from the university. At that time, computers were not very popular. We had some in, in my office. I used, I used to work for General Motors. Um, I was single. Um, in the evening, I like to visit um, libraries where I, I study and read, catch up with the news in newspapers. So when I get to the library, I see students, elementary school students, high school students, coming to the library to use computers. They are required to queue up. When it gets to their turn, they will use the computer for like 45 minutes. So I watch them. After 45 minutes, the students will vacate the computer and the new students will use it. So I talk to them, the students, the, the children. I ask them if they were able to finish their assignment. Always they will say, no, they didn't have time to finish their assignment. Moreover, their parents is rushing them to take them back home. The next day, I will see the same student and I will ask him if he turned in his homework. He will say, no, I didn't turn it in because I didn't finish. That tells me that the student will not get a good grade. At that time too, companies in America, they were literally dumping computers in the trash. Not the recycle, but that time they were putting it in the trash, trash can, in the dumpster. So what I do is I go to the dumpster, I pick up those computers, 
and I fix them in my house. And I can use maybe four computers to repair one. And I, I go to the library and I give it to the students for free. My house was like a big <laughs> tra transfer workshop. So I did that for a few years. And I realized I might as well open an NGO to recycle computers and help the students. So that was how I started World Education Relief. Now we have a lot of computers. We give it to students for almost free. This time we don't give it to them absolutely free. We charge, say, $50 for a computer that is worth $500. We charge them $50 just to pay our electric bill. Our, our volunteers are not paid. They are not paid for it. We just try to keep track and take care of our water bill, electric bill, telephone bill, and then we give them the computers for free. So that was how uh, the World, Medi World Education Relief started. Now, World Medical Relief, uh, I'm the ambassador. World Medical Relief has been in the business since 1954, during the Korean War. A lady, Mrs. Um, Oblai, Oblai um, saw on the news that um, some orphans in Korea needed materials, um, baby food, diapers. So she started calling, knocking door to door uh, um, in his neighborhood for them to donate baby food to her. She will collect a lot, box it, send it to the U.S. Army. The U.S. Army will ship the goods to, to Korea, you know. So the, um, she also realized that uh, at a point, her house was too small for the goods she was getting. She was on the news and the companies saw that she was doing a good thing and they gave her a building. That is how um, World Medical Relief grew. So as a student, I began to volunteer at World Medical Relief to sort materials, box them, then ship them overseas. At a point, uh, it, it was clear that um, an ambassador was needed. So I became the ambassador for World Medical Relief for African countries. Uh, my role as an ambassador is to make sure that the goods we deliver to the countries are used as expected. Sometimes when, it, when, when we ship uh, medical equipment and uh, supplies to third world countries like Kenya, Nigeria, the goods are not used as we expected. Some are sold illegally. So as an ambassador, I vet the recipients. I make sure that the hospitals apply for these um, goods are genuine before we ship anything to them. I visit the hospitals, inspect them, interview the administrators, make sure they are properly connected and integrated, and we ship it to them. Even after shipment, I go to the same hospital um, unannounced, make sure that the equipment are well stored, and their um, delivery system is documented, and um, they are doing what they're supposed to do. So that's my role as, an, as a health ambassador for World Medical Relief. That's wonderful. Okay, well, I think we have touched the main things here for the NGO part. I don't know if there's any other thing you want to add that we've not really touched. My mother was um, scriptural. She loved the scripture. She, she read the Bible from cover to cover more than four times. And she memorized a lot of Bible verses. My mother was evangelical. She loves to preach. If my mother meets you the first time, her first person will be, are you born again? <laughs> Have you accepted Jesus as your Christ and personal Savior? He will better say yes. If you say no, then you'll be, you'll be her target. Every tool in, the, in, in her uh, uh, 
Christian toolbox, she will use it to convert you into Christianity. Um, my mother was generous, very generous. I mean, uh, all those pillars, I can tell you tons of stories about them. My mother was generous to the point where, to the, to the to a fault, actually. One day, I came back from work without her knowing. It was a, in the middle of winter. I went inside, my mother wasn't there. Okay, before I go deep into this story, let me tell you the fifth pillar. She loves the family. Uh, prayerful, very prayerful, scripture, evangelical, generous, and family. Okay. About um, generous. I went, in, I went into the house, my mother wasn't there. I was single. Um, my mother came to us in the United States. She, she, she stayed with me. It was cold, snow falling. I looked at the truck. Somebody left the house. No, that my mother was not in the house. After a few minutes, she came back, well dressed for, for cold. Then I started talking to her. I realized she walked for one hour to a bank. She was there a few minutes before the bank opened at 9 o'clock. She went in, in, into the bank, withdrew some money, went another 45 minutes to Western Union to send money to Nigeria, and then another 55 minutes from Western Union back home in the middle of winter. Now, why did she do that? She was telling me. Um, Somebody called her from Nigeria that they needed money and they were suffering. I said, Ma, why don't you tell me I can give you a ride to the bank instead of risking your life? She said she didn't want to bother me. Apparently she was doing this many times before I found out. So I said, please don't do it next time. She said, what? Um, <laughs> she was in tears. I could be a hobo. I could be a hobo for seven months. I can have one. It's your shit. Do you want them to die? I heard you wrong. I don't want them to die. But Moza, Gabam, Marco Jake in a bag. Get her on snow in the winter. He gave me a rock. So that's just one example of how generous she was. Um, generosity, prayerful. My mother can pray. Pray, 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 pray. Her thing is pray without ceasing. From her, I, I know uh, uh, um, First Thessalonians chapter five verse seventeen. Pray without ceasing. Every time, pray, pray, pray. In the morning, before we before we uh, go to sleep, we pray. In the middle of the night, when somebody is sick, we pray. We wake up in the morning, we pray. Before we go to school, we pray. Before breakfast, we pray. After breakfast, we pray. Before we go to uh, when we are coming back from school, <laughs> we pray. Ah, we are going to play with friends, we pray. We are running errands, we have to pray. I will miss her cooking. She loves to cook. She, she loves to experiment. Once she sees somebody cooks something that she hadn't cooked before, she will experiment on it and perfect it. She knows how to cook. She loves to cook. She loves her grandchildren. Oh, and they love her too. They will miss her. So what are the key things she learned from her that has helped you as a man growing up? I learned how not to keep grudges. I learned how to, if you disagree with somebody, say it out 
of you not clearly and then just let it loose. Don't keep it to yourself. She's very peaceful. You can hurt my mother's feelings. And you think that in the next five minutes she still has grudge in her. No. She will make sure that if there is any anything that that grudge is not there anymore. I learned how to stick on the Bible. Let it be your primary way of living. I learned a lot from her. So what advice do you have for your siblings? For? Advice to your siblings. Um, for my siblings, I would say let us keep the same spirit that our mother has um, taught us the way she wants us to live. Honest life, love for each other, love for the community, love for everybody we, we get in touch with, to treat each other the way we want to be treated. Um, to be happy, to work hard, communicate frequently, to just do the right thing. Um, I am, by default, the first son of my mother. By default, I mean our oldest brother died in 1986, January 1, 1986. We called him Brotoni. Um, he, he, he was about 33 years old when, when he died. He was a banker, a bank manager in Lagos. And we will miss him. After his death, then I assumed the position of the first son in the family. It is an assignment I don't like to do, but <laughs> I don't have a choice. <laughs>